throughout your uh, career at st microelectronics you have been in st microelectronics for uh, about 19 years so what were some of the very interesting projects that you have worked on that you could remember i know that almost every project that you have worked would be interesting but in your opinion for you what were some of the challenging and most interesting projects that you have worked on okay so uh, you know a few a few projects actually stand out and uh, and they stand out also because probably no one else in the country has done such kind of projects that we got exposed to at st microelectronics so uh, i am a memory designer so i was in the memory design team at st and uh, with memory design team what the beautiful thing was was that we were a bigger team or the we were the biggest design team for memories in st worldwide so we were leading the architecture design we were leading the methodology design we were the leaders uh, in fact we uh, the noida team still continues to be the leader in uh, you know defining the strategy of st for embedded memories and uh, due to this leadership position or due to this kind of an exposure this kind of a responsibility we were exposed to designing uh, very interesting uh, memories uh which would be uh which would probably never come to a person in any other company at least not in india and uh, uh we 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 have worked on uh you know cross memories where you have two ports where one port is uh orthogonal to the other so typically when we talk of dual port memories we have uh two port memories which the two ports are kind of parallel to each other it's easy to access it's easy to uh, uh, to read and control logic is much simpler we worked on transpose memories where you would write on the rows but you would read from the columns so we have done very interesting stuff that was one kind of memory that we have worked on uh, then you know as the technology scaled see frankly when you when you purchase a new laptop or a new phone you expect the performance to improve isn't it if your last laptop was operating at 2 gigahertz you would now want it to operate at 2.4 gigahertz 2.2 gigahertz no, it should improve yeah you expect it to be cheaper also okay you know this yes, extra performance totally. at a cheaper cost not even the same cost you want it to be cheaper but uh, for memories it doesn't really happen that way so while the remaining logic and other part of the technology would shrink with uh, with scaling in technology memory cell area does not shrink at least in the advanced technologies it doesn't shrink and even then you have to give that performance gain to the user give that cost benefit to the user and also prolong the life because uh, you know the the devices are leakier in advanced technologies and you have to have techniques which would reduce that leakage which would uh, which would manage stuff in a different way so the challenges were immense and uh, projects were exciting uh, every new technology that we transitioned into a completely new set of challenges came one of the key challenges was that uh, as the technology scales variability increases now once on one side i am saying that the performance of the memory the area of the memory cell is not reducing so uh, performance of the memory cell is not improving again because area is not reducing performance is also not improving because uh the currents are already low the memory cell is almost the minimum size already and over the top of it there is a variability challenge so what we realized early on was that uh, gaussian assumptions no longer work for memory cells and that led us me and my team to explore methods to verify the memory self timing memory memory design uh without this gaussian assumption so we had to delve deep into statistics we had so we were 10 years into our jobs left statistics long behind us but here we were again touching uh, uh extreme value theorems and probability and and arriving at logical estimates at logical methods to be able to verify the sram uh, i think that was one of the most exciting and the turning point in my career also because uh till then i was mostly into memory design architecture design over here when i did this i actually realized that 
there is a huge uh, potential in methodology design also and that there are possibilities to publish work and there are possibilities to patent so that was the first project where we actually went through that grind myself i, I went through that grind myself and uh, it was exciting we were the first ones uh, i think across the world to come up with that kind of a methodology uh, which was more accurate than what even ibm so ibm we always felt was the world leader uh, ibm was always you know in terms of methodology Uh, yeah, new methodology, methodology updates yeah. always far ahead of others so we 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 realized that we benchmarked and we realized that our methodology was better than what ibm had proposed in one of their papers so we were really proud of this work and, uh, and then that set me out to say okay yaar maza aa raha hai we should do i should pursue a phd and then i pursued phd and then after some time i felt to oh, i should probably go out and teach so that is when i left st and joined triple it so i think that that project on uh, methodology design for self timing replica path tuning that was a key turning point in my experience in fact it feels uh, very good and honored about uh, listening to someone who is working at cutting edge in any technology so you have worked in yeah, it, is it is fun it is fun it is fun yes so you were talking about going uh, going to teach at triple uh, it delhi so uh, so that's our next question actually so you have worked in industry and you have worked on cutting edge technology in memory design so why all of a sudden after doing your phd you wanted to go and teach to the students so neeraj it was not actually all of a sudden thing so uh, we had professor r n biswas biswas who who was a mentor uh, at triple it delhi and who was also consulting us at st microelectronics i'm talking about 2011 2012 time frame at that time i was still pursuing my phd so professor biswas uh, would visit triple it and he would also visit st and uh, at one point of time he told us that uh, they are starting they are launching the ece program in 2012 and uh, if if i would be interested we could i could teach a course at triple it so uh i have always as i as you yourself mentioned that i have been a trainer at st microelectronics and and all that so i have always conducted training sessions uh and that was you know i think since 2003 2004 i have been conducting trainings at st so it did not require too much of an experience to conduct trainings i was like i i i love to share what i know and when this opportunity came in 2012 i jumped on to it and while i was still pursuing my phd i started to teach at triple it while being a part of st so st enabled this st is a very i i personally feel st is a very gracious company it enabled this for me not just for me many other people many of us were teaching at triple it while we were working at st as guest faculty at triple it so i got a taste of teaching regular courses uh, while at st while i was still pursuing my phd i also started guiding students on projects while so they would they would do a course with me and then those who were interested to continue to work on some topics that i was interested in they would join st as an intern and i would guide them on the project so all that was happening all that was happening through these 2012 to 2019 when i finally joined triple it so it was not that it was a sudden decision it was just that it slowly grew on me that i enjoy this work a lot i enjoy interacting with students i enjoy sharing my knowledge i enjoy sharing my experience with the students and uh, help them grow so that's how it happened so it's clear that it was a gradual dis- uh, decision and you were already yeah, into yeah. teaching indirectly yes yes, yes yes so uh you have sir i mean have you worked on uh, in memory compute since uh, there's a lot of work that's currently going into processing in memory and in memory compute and if so uh, how is uh, memory circuit design when it's designed for uh, 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 memories with brains yeah so see i liken it with uh, the evolution of uh, life so there was a time when there was no neural system then we gradually developed a brain and gradually that brain 
did not just do storage of information it started to do decision making and calculations that is when human beings came into picture hmm. so that is what is happening with our chips also there was a time when there was no separate memory at all then there came a time when there were register files and there were memories memories would only do storage and today we are in a stage where the kind of compute that needs to be that you cannot really transfer all that information from the memory to to the circuits where that information is required or where the processing can happen so this is famously known as von neumann bottleneck it's something like saying that your brain cannot send all the information for computation to through the spine to body parts like the hand doesn't really decide it has to form a fist it is my brain that decides that and then just informs the hand that please form a fist so that is what is now going to happen more and more with our processors also uh, different parts will no longer be deciding by themselves or the processing will actually reside more and more in the memory itself so it will no longer be just the memory it will be the brain of the of the processor there so i'm not saying this will happen instantaneously it is gradually happening that is the trend we are observing and in fact i am working on it quite a few of my students are working on it uh, we have uh, we have worked on digital uh, in memory compute we have published work on embedding security uh, into inside the memory so we are doing security related computation inside the memory uh, i have another student who is working on uh, analog analog in memory compute for artificial intelligence that is neural network implementations uh another set of students have worked on uh, in memory compute for graphic processors where we studied what are the most commonly used functions in a graphic processor where memory access is required and we have pushed those things inside the memory we have like those functions are now completely embedded inside the memory so that that data transfer is avoided that does not that is not no longer required and uh, we are able to improve the energy efficiency of the system multifold so not just the uh, the performance but even the energy efficiency of the system increases multifold so this is a very up and coming field you rightly said that and uh, i am enjoying working in it i am really enjoying working in it along with my students yes sir uh the analogy uh, with the evolution of human brain was interesting in fact and also this this the answer which you just gave uh, that makes it very attractive to students uh, that makes it uh, makes triplicate delhi very attractive because with the projects that you are mentioning those those are very good opportunities for students yeah 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 so if any one of your audience is interested to pursue a masters or just you know just do some research or in fact pursue a phd program at triple it delhi uh, we are always open we we do not have a cut date that okay you can apply for admissions only now whenever you feel like it please feel free to approach me i will be happy to review uh, the problem statements that i have with you we can identify joint uh, you know in problem statements of mutual joint interest and we can take them up so please uh, please feel free to reach out Yes sir thank you